some of these criminal activities. Because all our organizations are registered with government. They are not faceless organizations, number one. Then two, we do our things in the open. Three, our organization is led by educated people, by Islamic and Western standards. So they know Islam, they practice Islam, and they ensure that um, they inculcate knowledge in people rather than indoctrination. And most of our things are based on juristic uh, views that you can read and then uh, cite. Not one scholar say you should do this. No. So in the Muslim Congress, you see artisans, you see educated persons, you see uh, typical Islamic scholars. But all of us will flow together because for the first day, we build our organization on knowledge and uh, knowledge share. How do, how do you think this strategy will combat the ideological indoctrination of, uh, of Muslims? Yes, there is need for collaboration and idea sharing. And that's why we are not limiting our activities to Southwest. As we speak, we have established a branch in Abuja, a branch in um, Niger, and then within the last week, we are also working with our brothers in Yobe State, who have seen the need to associate with the responsible Islamic. In fact, they requested for our certificates of registration but there are some American organizations who want to fund peace initiative and they want to partner with responsible organizations. In fact, they cited the Muslim Congress. Because they have seen our activities. We have websites. We have Facebook. We are on LinkedIn. We are on Twitter. So we are not faceless. We travel abroad. None of our members are humiliated because we are partners with government. It doesn't mean we are in government, but we partner with government. We are not anti-state. And again, it is anti-state. It means we are building a state within a state, and that is terrorism. Oh. You should respect military. You should respect the police force because they are there to protect lives and property. Once you, once you say you don't recognize them, you have problem, and that's what happened to the Shia in Nigeria. So you don't uh, indoctrinate your people. Let them be informed. Let them be educated, so that where you and government even clash on ideological ground, you go to court. For instance, look at the issue of Egypt. We are in court with some other organization. But in some part of the world, they will, they will start demonstrating killing, causing commotion. That is terrorism. So we don't allow that in our own organization. Okay, sir. On the theme of uh, this year's uh, Nas National Islamic Training Program, what lesson do you want the delegates to take home? Yes, if you look at the theme, we said change Islamic perspective. So many people in Nigeria today, across the political parties, they all agree that there is need for change in Nigeria because socially, politically, economically, Nigeria has remained stagnant. But most of the advocates of change, they themselves don't understand the nature and the dynamics of change. Many of them, they cannot even change their own person, not to talk of their family, and you want to change the nation. So if you are talking about change, you must understand that change simply means you want to change your uh, norms, your world views, the way you spend your time, your money, your honor. So if you are not ready to sacrifice, then do expect change. There are so many people who are looting Nigerian treasury. They are also causing change, change. The change is that the money of Nigeria should be spent on Nigeria. The meaning of change is that we should do away with mediocrity and we start using merit. People are competent to manage our resources, our local government, our state, and the federal structure. But some are saying change, but they are not ready to let go. Psychophancy, incompetence, etc. So state change has come with sacrifices, and you need to tighten our belt. But many, many are not ready to tighten their belt. Look at the uh, fat salary people in the House of Assembly, uh, National Assembly, uh, etc. They are giving to themselves. And they want to cut the minimum wage, but they are not ready to cut. So that's not change. The real change is that everybody must sacrifice. The leaders and the led, the rich and the poor, everybody, for the collective good. Do you understand? Look at our Tasha institution. They are glorified primary school. Change simply means all the waste they are, that we are putting into white elephant project should be diverted to university for research, for teaching, etc. So that we are going to have quality 
human resources that will man our ministry, that will man our local government. But many people don't understand change like that. You just believe that change will just come like a miracle and Nigeria will become South Africa or um, America. Maybe they didn't know. We must sacrifice a lot. That's what change means. And we're not telling that, that if uh, Nigerians don't appreciate this, you as Muslim, you must go home with some of these uh, lessons. That you must be ready to sacrifice time, your honor, your money, and everything for the collective good. That is what we are trying to invite okay. in our participants. Okay, Islamophobia has been uh, honed, especially yeah. in Nigeria. In what way do you think this can affect the unity, the entity called Nigeria? Yes, Islamophobia simply means you have hatred for anything called Nigeria, anything called Islam. And this is dangerous. Dangerous in the sense that if you look at so many non Muslims, they are enjoying a lot of privileges, which ordinarily is not in their religion. But because they copied from the Muslims, government approved it for them. And they are in it. A very good example is pilgrimage. Everybody knows there is no pilgrimage in uh, Christianity. But because Muslims are doing it, they felt where well, it's national key, we must also partake in it. Government approved it for them. Muslims never complete because we all own Nigeria. But when it comes to our own town, people don't reciprocate in the same manner. Look at hijab. In all our secondary schools, our sister we are in Beret is a colonial legacy and a Christian legacy. Now that we say we want to adopt hijab without affecting anybody, many of them kick against it. That is Islamophobia. So, for the uh, uh, development of Nigeria, it is very, very important to live and let's live. But the moment that you are living and you don't want the other person to live, it breeds what we can call radicalism. And that's what is happening in some part of the world. Where you are giving everybody fundamental human rights, you are respecting their culture, their norms and tradition. Even look at traditional religious practitioners. You aim a good for them under the name of culture. When it comes to Muslim, you say, well, we don't have nothing to do. It promotes radicalism. And where you have organizations that cannot caution their members, then they resort to what you are saying in, in, I mean, uh, Zaria. Uh, Zaria and that part of the world. But in this part of the world, we have uh, resorted to the use of Islamic instrumentation, which is writing letter, petition, dialoguing, and if need be, go to court in the case of hijab and other things. But in the interests of progress and development in Nigeria, we must allow that. Look at US. It's not a, it's an Islamic state, yet they give Muslims what they deserve. In spite of terrorism and what have you, they allow people to use their hijab and they respect their symbols. But in this part of the world, Muslims are even in the majority. Because some people are in the corridor of power, they are the policy maker, they now skewed government policy in favor of their religion and uh, because they, of course, they fear Muslims and uh, Islam. We have seen some interviews where our Muslim brother went there with beard. He said, you must shave your beard. Whereas globally, keeping beard is a personal identity or to be a religious identity, which is allowed. The most important is the competence and the merits, not what I wear or the features I put on. In UK, in America, you see some of their children who are Muslims, who are even convert, they keep heavy beards. Their beard is even bigger than Osama Bun legend. If you don't have criminal record, nobody must victimize you or profile you. But in this part of the world, we are even in the majority. People call us all sorts of things. We should stop in the interest of um, sustainable, good, and uh, peaceful coexistence. Thank you very much.